Good afternoon, everyone. I'm from the Legal Protection Unit in UNHCR Malaysia. And in today's session, we'll be covering two main topics, uh, which is very relevant and always uh, a big question from the community, which is the rights and responsibilities of refugees and asylum seekers in Malaysia, and what UNHCR can do for refugees and asylum seekers who experience legal protection concerns mainly when they are at risk of reform or being sent back to their home country um, and also about arrest and detention. So having a UNHCR document actually means that as a refugee and asylum seeker, the office recognizes your need for international protection with which helps refugees and asylum seekers from being deported to their country of origin. However, uh, refu refugees and asylum seekers should also know that UNHCR documents does not give the individual immunity from the law. Now, this uh, statement here, which is actually from Article 2 of the Refugee Convention, states that refugees and asylum seekers must respect the laws and regulation of the country of refuge. In this case, it's Malaysia. And laws are actually can be simply said as a set of rules in a country that set out what you can and cannot do in that particular country. It means that refugees and asylum seekers who commit any crimes in Malaysia will be subjected to the criminal justice system in accordance to the Malaysian law, just like any other person. Marie, if you could press next, you'd see that it this uh, statement is from Article 2 of the 1951 Refugee Convention. And moving on to the next slide. Now, there will be occasions that uh, as refugees or asylum seekers, you may be stopped by the law enforcement authorities, usually the police or immigration officials. And if you are stopped or arrested, always remember to remain calm and cooperate with the officers because if you resist the arrest, you may be facing charges for obstructing the officers from doing their duties. Secondly, you can also ask the reasons for your arrest and present the original copy of your UNHCR document for verification. The officer can verify your document using the UNHCR Verify Plus app that is available on the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. And upon the verification of your document, if they find that it is a genuine document, the officer may release you. But there may be instances as well where you may be arrested. Um, we, re we would remind you to actually request the officer to allow you to contact your family or friends, and they should be the ones to inform you and ensure of your arrest. Now, be sure that if you are arrested, please inform your friends or family the date of arrest or detention, the place where you are arrested, the police station or the authorities who are involved in the arrest. And sometimes if you know that you have a court date coming up, please also make sure that this information is shared with your friends or family. Now, the most important thing is also that make sure that your UNHCR document or reference number is also shared with your friends and family so they could also inform UNHCR um, regarding your arrest. Now, sometimes you may not have uh, a UN document, but you have submitted a registration application to the Refugee Malaysia website. You can also share this reference number from the website with the authorities. All this information that I mentioned here is actually useful for UNHCR to assist us in tracing your location and also assist us in releasing you from any immigration charges. Now, there are two ways that you can inform UNHCR of your arrest. These are usually the two common channels that we would receive information from the community. They are from the arrest and detention hotline, which is available here. Uh, the number is on the screen and also the operation hours uh, on weekdays and weekends are also stated here. 
Now, the arrest and detention hotline is available also for individuals who face protection issues, especially when they are at risk of reform mode. And it's also open to individuals who are seeking international protection, regardless of whether or not they have been able to register with UNHCR. And please be reminded that this services that UNHCR offer is free of charge. Now, the hotline, uh, as you see here, is available from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. on weekdays and 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on weekday weekends, including the UN public holidays. Now, uh, when making a report, again, I would like to remind you that you share the information of the person who is being arrested, such as their names, age, gender, body number, their file number, UNHCR document number, that means um, whether or not they're registered or not, please also let us know. And the details of their arrest, like where were they arrested or where are they being held, the date that they are being arrested. And if you happen to know, like what is the reasons for arrest, please also state it there. If again, you know what is the court date or the location of um, where the, your, the individual will be attending court, please let us know. Now, I would also like to remind you not to um, make multiple reports because um, this would obviously slow down UNHCR's responses, meaning to say that we would uh, be confused with some of the information that may be reported multiple times if uh, the information is not accurately captured. Yeah, And the second way for you to report on arrest and detention is also stated here under the Refugee Malaysia website. Yeah. Okay. Okay, moving on. So if you are arrested, you would be detained to allow the enforcement authority to conduct further investigation into the offense that uh, you are suspected for. This is called the uh, remand period. And the duration of the remand actually depends on the offense. For example, if you are arrested for a criminal offense, the duration is up to 24 hours and can be extended up to 7 or 14 days. For immigration offences, the duration is up to 14 days for investigation. And please note that UNHCR might not be able to help you during the initial 14-day remand period because the authorities, unless the authorities actually ask us to um, verify your identity. And let's say, you know, we are informed of the arrest of uh, an asylum seeker or a refugee. What we usually do is uh, we would verify the information of the arrest through the information that might have been shared, right? This is again through the arrest or detention hotline. Secondly, uh, once we have that information, we would speak to the enforcement officer to understand what is the case uh, about, meaning to say what, what was the reason of your arrest, and advocate for your release if it was an immigration offence. Thirdly, in some cases, we may offer legal assistance for immigration charges. And again, like we mentioned earlier, depending on the outcome of the investigation during this remand period, the individual may either be released or brought to court to be charged. Moving on to the next slide. Now, for some individuals who are charged, you will be brought to court. You would also be brought to court if you did not get to inform your, anyone of your arrest. And if you're already in court, you would have the opportunity to tell the judge that you are registered with UNHCR. Never ever agree or shake your head if you don't understand what is being said. Always ask for an interpreter because if you plead guilty, 
the court will sentence you and you may be jailed or even fined. If you don't plead guilty, you will be given a date for trial where you will have the opportunity to defend yourself. In case you might not have the opportunity to contact anyone before this, please ask permission from the judge to contact your family, friends, community leaders, or even UNHCR. Be sure that your family or friends inform UNHCR of your situation so we can intervene on the immigration offence. Inform the judge that you require legal assistance. UNHCR will not intervene for any cases that has um, criminal offence because this is obviously a crime in Malaysia. And also please know that sometimes you will be kept in prison while waiting for your case to be completed or you can also apply for bail. But this is only if the court allows it. If the court finds that you are not guilty after the whole process, you will be released. Moving on to the next slide. Now, if you're found guilty, you will be sentenced to imprisonment, a fine or even whipping, depending what is provided in the act that you are charged under. Now, if you are uh, charged for criminal offence, you will be detained in prison until you complete your sentencing as ordered by the court. Upon completion of prison sentence for non-Malaysians, what usually happens is that they will be transferred to an immigration detention facility pending the removal, their removal from the country. For individuals with UNHCR document, what would happen here is that UNHCR would advocate for the release. But please remember that the decision to release any individual still depends on the Malaysian authorities. This is actually one of the common questions that we are always asked. When will UNHCR release my friend or family that has been detained for X amount of months or years or maybe even longer, you know? Um, we would like to emphasize or remind you here that while UNHCR prioritized the release of refugees and asylum seekers from detention, again, I remind you that the decision to release any detainee rests entirely with the Malaysian authorities. As of today, UNHCR still cannot access any um, immigration detention centers, and we are constantly engaging with the uh, immigration department as well as other stakeholders to request for permission to enter deten to to enter immigration detention centers. Unfortunately, um, UNHCR's access is still denied, which makes it very challenging for us to identify individuals who are in need of international protection and assistance. So. I would like to remind you that um, you continue to update us on the location of your friends and families who are detained because there may be instances where they are transferred and we would need to be updated on your latest uh, information when we are speaking to the authorities to advocate for their release. Now, this is on the topic of um, arrest and detention. Now, the next uh, topic would be about making a police report because there will be times where refugees and asylum seekers informs us that they experience threat to their safety and well-being, either from fellow refugees or non-refugees. For your physical safety, we encourage you to lodge a police report on the threats that you are facing as the police have a duty to protect any individuals in the country and conduct the necessary investigation. So to make a police report, you can go to the nearest police station. All police stations, again, are open 24 hours a day, but you need to make sure that the report is made in Malay or English only. If you cannot speak the language fluently, uh, I would encourage you or advise you that you go with your family, friends, or um, community leader who is able to communicate in the local language. 
please also make sure that you bring your uh, relevant documents such as the your identity document and any other supporting document regarding the incident. Now, when you are in uh, the police station, make sure that you introduce yourself and show the, your identity document to the police and inform the police what type of police report that you wish to make. Here, it's either a case report or an action report. Now, this is the other issue that we always face in the legal protection unit, is that when people come to us and say that they've made a police report, but they are not aware on the, of these differences. Now, what is a police, oh, sorry, what is a case report and what is an action report, right? So an action report here is when you want the police to take further action, such as having the person who committed the crime investigated, arrested and charged in court. And a case report is only made when you want to inform the police, but do not want the police to take a further action on against the person who committed the crime. Now, when you're uh, detailing this out in the police report, make sure that you inform the police, uh, you state out where uh, the incident happened, when it happened, what actually transpired or what actually happened and who is involved. The copy of the police report is usually free. And sometimes what we also would uh, encourage you to do is that you draft this information or you draft your police report before you go to the police station. At least when you see the police uh, or when you break down this report in the police station, you already have the information ready uh, for the police to uh, note down. Now, what happens next? You or the individuals involved may also be called in for further interviews uh, by the police officers. And there may be instances where you need to attend court to be witnesses if the authority decides to press charges against the perpetrator. Yeah. We have completed uh, a series of legal awareness videos. And I would actually encourage you to look at these videos, uh, which all the information that I was shared here today can be also found on the criminal and in immigration law, where other information such as bail, legal assistance, and other topics on your rights and responsibilities as refugees and asylum seekers will be covered um, in the video. This video is actually um, a uh, four-part series. There are three other legal awareness videos in this series. Uh, Marie, if you can press uh, next, you'd see that there are three other videos here that is that is developed together with uh, by UNHCR together with the Kuala Lumpur Legal Aid Center, which talks on civil matters, family laws, and also employment issues. Now, by you understanding your rights and responsibility. This would keep you more informed about your uh, rights, especially when you are at risk of exploitation, arrest, or even deportation. This obviously, this videos obviously covers several important legal issues and addresses a lot of the uh, frequently asked legal questions by refugees and asylum seekers in Malaysia. These videos are all available at the legal protection page in the Refugee Malaysia website. We have also drafted um, some additional information that will be uploaded in the uh, cultural orientation page. Now, this is important for you to familiar, familiarize yourselves with the local culture and customs as this can minimize complaints and avoid you from being arrested or detained. Um, we also, in this uh, upcoming uh, page, uh, on, on legal protection, we have detailed out some of the punishments for some of the com common criminal offenses and the rights of a person when they are arrested. Now, to wrap up, I would like to remind everybody um, to respect Malaysian laws and points, Marie. And UNHCR will not intervene for
for criminal case, always carry your UNHR document and ensure your family members or friends know of your UNHR registration number. The reason is because, like we mentioned earlier, a lot of times that if you're going to report of the arrest of an individual, we need those information so we're able to trace and negotiate with the relevant authorities who have arrested your friends or family members, yeah? And obviously all uh, the information that was uh, spoken about today, you can also, also find them on the legal protection page at the refugeemalaysia.org. There's also additional information regarding GBV and livelihoods um, that covers a little bit on the legal protection side of things that's also available on the Refugee Malaysia webpage. And also, lastly, please contact the Arrest and Detention Hotline for support. If you are at risk of being sent back to your home country or um, being arrested or detained, or if, you're, if you feel your safety is threatened. Now, please be reminded that all UNHR services is free and you should not be paying um, anybody for expediting your case, yeah? 